the refusal of the ascetic came from the great, those are the words of the great Sri Aurobindo, right. are they not? No. So, in my imperfect understanding, uh, Sri Aurobindo was the preeminent Vedantic realizer of evolution. He was the first Vedantic realizers to include the discovery of cosmic evolution, biological, biological evolution, and the evolution of mind in his thinking. So he, from my understanding of his teachings, he embraced the whole notion that the world process, the entire world process that's been born is in, a, in, in an unending process of complexification. And it seems that the energy and intelligence that created the universe, which is creating the universe, which is Brahman, aspires towards greater complexification and greater self-knowledge and greater capacity. So the reaching into the future of Brahman in and through the form and forms that he or she gave rise to is in my understanding the most profound understanding of the meaning of existence. So this is why in my understanding Brahman or the energy and intelligence that created the universe is trying to become more of who he or she always already is in and through form. And that reaching towards greater complexification is the ecstatic aspiration of Brahman or God. So embracing that definition or that understanding of the meaning of Brahman and the meaning of the Absolute helps us to inform the meaning and significance of our own imperfect human existence. So when we see that who I really am is the energy and intelligence that created the universe and is creating the universe, awakening to itself and its own cosmic aspirations through the body-mind personality of this unique vehicle, I am only a vehicle for the evolution of consciousness and culture. I am not, an end. my body, mind, and ego and personality are not ends in themselves, but they're vehicles through which Brahman, or the energy and intelligence that created the universe, and is creating the universe, can co-create the future with these hands, these feet, this mind, and this body, and this personality. So then we understand that this body, mind, and personality is a vehicle through which Brahman, or God, can create and give rise to the form, the, to the infinite complexity and greater complexification of form that he or she gave rise to. So this contextualizes the human experience in an infinite context of evolutionary becoming. And it's an evolutionary becoming that is not personal, but as Prabhu was saying, it's impersonal, it's transpersonal, it's absolute, and it's miraculous. And that in that reaching towards the future, there's an, there's an ex, the energy and intelligence cr that created the universe is ecstatically reaching towards greater complexification so that its manifestation in and through form and the complexification of form can more and more come to reflect its own infinite and divine nature. And I believe that's really the process that we're involved in, in here. So if that's true, if that seems to be true based upon our realization and on our understanding, um, My understanding and interpretation of the Bodhisattva vow that Prabhuji was speaking about has to do with cultivating the willingness and the aspiration to be here as long as it's going to, as long as it's going to take to enlighten all the matter in the universe. To enlighten when all the matter in the universe becomes in, enlightened means all matter becomes conscious of itself, and when the whole universe ultimately would become self-conscious and self-aware, that, that cosmic divine aspiration would be fulfilled. That's my understanding. And so this, from an evolutionary point of view, from the perspective of our relative existence in this body and mind right now, is an in, it's an infinite God-like aspiration. Only a God could conceive of such and aspire to such a motivation. So when a human being begins to recognize and realize and have this kind of intuition of what Brahman is really up to, 
as the creative principle in the universe, we are we awaken to this to a literally an aspiration towards creativity that's literally infinite. And so when a conscious human being can transcend the fears and desires of the small self, the separate self, the unenlightened ego and personality, and embrace this truly cosmic as, cosmic aver, aspiration towards cosmic creativity infinitely through infinite forms, infinitely into the future, this is to me the whole point. So let me let me get clarification. Uh, if if uh, one says that after one has some glimpses, all the personality structure is gone. If personality disappears, does it mean that creative process itself will also end? No. Or for creative process to continue, the personality has to be there and equally.